In 2024, LiDAR autofocus isn't exactly a new technology, and there's many systems out there that are currently offering LiDAR autofocus. But the biggest caveat with some of those is that you need to use it with a gimbal, like some of the DJI systems, for example. But when you pair the Panasonic S1H with the PD Movie Live Air Smart 3, it unlocks LiDAR autofocus that you can use both handheld and on a gimbal. So I thought I'd test out the PD Movie LiDAR system along with some of the newer Sure anamorphic lenses on the S1H to see whether the performance is adequate enough to ditch manual focusing altogether. So in order to get into the calibration mode, you need to long press the button just to make sure that it's got the actual stroke of the lens calibrated. And then what that will do is it will run basically from the furthest focus point to the closest focus point. And that's why having hard stops is really essential when you are using this system. And once you've done that, then you need to tap once and then long hold. And then basically the light on the front of it will start bleeping. And then that's when you know you're into the sort of calibration mode. So the first thing you need to do is actually find focus at sort of the closest focus point of the lens. You tap and you'll hear that beep. And then once you do that, you need to move back about sort of half a meter, if you like, 0.6 meters or so. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna grab focus again, and then do the exact same thing where I just hit it, and then listen up for that beep. Perfect, and now the final step is just basically going at 1.5 meters away from where you are now. So the final sort of reading should be about two to 2.1 meters. And then find your focus there again on that assisted focus chart. So that's about there, and then you click. You'll hear the beep. There you go, and then now, effectively, we should be all good to go. Now with that first calibration on the 75 millimeter Sure uh, anamorphic lens, let's see if it tracks me. So I'm gonna walk towards the camera. I cannot see if I'm in frame or not, so you guys leave me alone if I'm not. Um, but from what I can see, the focus motor seems to be performing quite smoothly. I mean, it seems to be moving without any sort of issues and stuff as I approach and move away from the camera, which is of course exactly what we want. Um, I'm just hoping that it doesn't focus on the background and sticks to me instead of, you know, sort of losing me. And that's the issue sometimes with LiDAR is it is essentially a dumb autofocus system in the sense that essentially LiDAR is an invisible beam that sort of measures the distance between, you know, the sort of receiving end and the actual subject. And then it sort of acquires focus based on that distance. So realistically, if I'm not in front of the camera, if I move to the side, like now, for example, then it probably might jump to the background, even if I am in frame. But that's also a pretty good test. I'm just gonna get out of frame and see how quickly it can acquire focus. So. Getting the squats in as well, this is great. How's this doing? <laughs> okay. For me, one of the biggest pluses with the recent releases from Sure is actually the size of these anamorphic lenses because as you can see, they are very small and very lightweight compared to the older anamorphics that they were making. Which means that if you did actually want to use them on a gimbal or you want to use them handheld, you're not going to be sort of strained by, you know, carrying these around all day long, which is really nice. And of course, these lenses are still full frame. They have a 1.6x squeeze, which is a really nice anamorphic squeeze in my opinion and really gives you some of that nice anamorphic characteristic. I opted for the blue flare variants, not the natural flare like I had with the 35 millimeter that I tested a while ago. And purely because the blue flare is an iconic characteristic of anamorphic lenses, and I sort of wanted to see how it looked. I did a few outdoor tests on an overcast day when there wasn't really too much harsh sunlight around. And as you can see, when you're orbiting a subject or pushing into a subject, it does work really well. Um, and then in this next shot coming up here, you can see how I was trying to do a sort of craning shot, moving back to see if I can actually keep Hannah in focus. Pretty sure to tell that it was back to front, but oh well. Um, and then this next shot, I'm trying to do a reveal from the tree to the subject. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. But things get a little bit interesting. We have a moving subject because as you can see in this example, it has her, loses her, and then snaps back into focus again when she's a little bit closer. I went back to the drawing board to see how we could sort of correct that sort of further focusing issue that I was having. And when looking through the package that I was sent from PD Movie, I realized that they actually include this little sort of shiny holographic 
attachment thing with a magnet on it. And literally on the back of it, it says, when worn and used in a high intensity sunlight environment, the LiDAR device effectively compensates for scanning range and stability of LiDAR motor. So essentially, it's saying that if you put this on, it should do a better job when you move further away from the camera in a sunny environment. I then did another test where Hannah had that little foil thing attached to her hat, and to be honest, the results weren't much better. And as you can see in this example, you really do need your subject to be in the dead center of the frame in order for the LiDAR to acquire focus. And to be honest, I had a real mixed bag of results when testing this system outside, um, because sometimes it'll work, but sometimes it just wouldn't, even when my subject was dead center of the frame and not too far away. So realistically, you just can't rely on it. So would I recommend the PD Movie Live Air 3 Smart LiDAR Autofocus System? This one's a bit weird. It's sort of in a gray area for me because in some ways, yes, I really would recommend it because it does work very well indoors when you have calibrated it properly. Um, but that being said, it does become a little bit more hit and miss when you are outside, depending on the lighting condition and how harsh the sunlight is on that given day. Um, that being said, if you are trying to sort of shoot static objects, let's say for example, buildings, billboards, whatever it is, um, something that's not moving essentially, then realistically you shouldn't have many issues when you are using the LiDAR motor outside. Um, for me, the main sort of point of contention was when I was trying to shoot a moving subject, and that's when I had the most issues. So if you are someone that does just want to shoot something that is static outside, then you shouldn't really have that many issues. Um, so I guess it's just up to you and your use case. That being said, if I had a paid shoot outdoors, I would not trust the PD Movie LiDAR autofocus system, purely because I just can't rely on it to give me exactly what I'm looking for each time I go and do a take. Um, and of course, when there's money on the line, you really don't want to leave it up to a LiDAR autofocus motor because realistically, it is just an invisible beam of light and it is essentially a dumb autofocus system.